Um... Hi there guys, welcome back to the channel here and uh, I've got another video for you. It's been a long time since I've done a guest interview. Um, I've, lots of stuff's happened. I spent last week away in LA visiting my daughter. We did a launch just before that. And um, so yeah, I'm just finally picking things back up again. And um, this actually came out of a conversation I had while I was in LA. And uh, you're going to hear in a minute uh, from Kate and you're going to find out quite why this comes in. But uh, thankfully, I reached out to Kate, who's a friend of mine and one of my members, and just said, um, I could really do with some help and some input from you. And it kind of went from there. And I thought, do you know what? This really makes a good guest interview. So uh, I'm going to bring Kate on. Kate is um, an interior designer. And uh, we're going to find out. In fact, she can introduce herself. Kate, welcome to the audience here. Um, thank you very much for coming on. Um, why don't you just... Rather than me explain who you are, why don't you just tell me who you are and what it is you do? Sure. Okay. So hi, Adrian. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for having me on today. I'm really excited to be speaking with your audience and to be able to help. Um, so I'm an interior designer um, and I also teach interior design. So I teach uh, qualifications in interior design and I also run a business membership for interior designers to help them to set up and grow their own profitable businesses. Um, and for those of you that don't know, I'm in Adrian's Academy um, and I joined up because I wanted help setting up my video and all of the tech and obviously that's how our paths kind of crossed um, and so I'd seen in the group you know people asking questions about how to get their backdrops looking good and it's you know it's one of those things it's really really important when you're trying to give a yeah, great yeah. first impression and if you're really investing in the equipment that you need as well then you need to make sure that you've got kind of a whole package and that you've got a good looking backdrop as well so that's yeah. what I'm hoping to help you with today. Brilliant thank you um, I mean this is you know, you know, the first thing I do when you, people come into the academy is I say before we look at any equipment or anything like that, let's sort the, the set really, the location, because it does determine, it might make a difference where you're filming on what lights, what cameras, microphones, things like that. Um, but it is also really important to get this. And uh, on a recent webinar that I did, I was saying to, I gave some examples actually, and I showed, you know, because some of the members are actually there in a spare bedroom. Um, you know, there's a, there's a bed there with them, or Denise actually, who's on. Um, it, it was in a motorhome, and, and actually, <laughs> Denise, really glad you're on actually, because Denise was one who came to me and went, How am I going to be able to do this? Do I need to put a big screen up? And I think people assume, you know, maybe I'm not helping because I've got a fake backdrop here, but I think people assume they need to, so many times they'll come and go, right, so I need to go and get a fake brick wall or a fake kind of wood backdrop. <laughs> and, and while that is an option, um, I'm fearful that I'm actually starting to create something here that people assume they have to do that. I'd love to get back to a more natural set. Um, and, you know, hence why the other day I'd sent you a couple of images actually that I'd seen. And I'm, I'm, I'm quite often out looking and thinking, yeah, that would work nice as a backdrop. But it's how you take that and turn it into something really um, yeah, was absolutely. part of my thinking. It's just, you know, some tips and some advice really on maybe where we start. Maybe I'm jumping ahead a bit. Um, I, mean, I, I think, you know, what you have in your academy. So you do um, this kind of um, sort of investigation work, don't you? Where you send people right. around their house or around their office to find yeah. out the best location for filming. And I think, you know, like you said, it is best if you can have one fixed location, if that's possible, because yes. you don't want to be kind of setting up your backdrop every single time that you go yeah. to film. Because the reality is, if you have to do that, you're actually going to put off filming and you're not, you know, you're just not going to get around to it. Um, so I guess my first advice would be, if at all possible, do get yourself a permanent position that you yeah. can film in. And it actually doesn't have to be that huge of an area either. I mean, if you look no. at you can see here of my backdrop, there's not a huge amount that you can see beyond sort of either side of my shoulders. And actually, if I were to show you the whole wall here, you would see that it's not dressed <laughs> appropriately. Um, yeah. you know, it's done for the camera. Um, and so the first thing I'd say is if you can is to get yourself a location that it can be fixed. But that doesn't have to mean that it is a perfect location. It, it just has to be somewhere that's stable, that um, in some way represents kind of what your business is. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if we um, look at my backdrop to begin with here, even without me speaking, if you were just watching this video with no words in, you would be able to tell the area that I work in, the industry in which I work. You don't have mood boards in the back of your, um, you know, on That's your right. back. 
unless you're working in interior design. And really having a backdrop that talks about what you do for a living, it just helps to reinforce your brand. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter what you do for a living. You don't have to do something visual like me, but you can bring in, um, you know, other aspects that reflect what you do. Yeah. So for you, Adrian, you know, you're talking about the brick wall and, you know, actually your backdrop looks great. But if you wanted to brand that further, you could bring mm. in some kind of um, more elements that kind yeah. of speak of um, filming and photography. So you could, for example, have some pictures in the background that are, you know, black and white shots. Mm. Um, you could have some, you know, photography memorabilia or something like that on shelving behind you. Yes. And it just it's kind of it's setting the stage, really. And. It's, it's giving that giving the audience that automatic information about who you are and what you do. Yep, yep, definitely. And I think it's um, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to speak out a lot. I, I, I know some others that do this and, and, and really kind of throw loads in the background there. And and actually, I found it quite distracting when I'm looking and I'm looking at you know toys and things on a bookshelf or whatever it be. And it might be that. Their, their idea is that this is me, this is my personality. But sometimes I think it's a fine line because I'm, sometimes I'm looking going, oh, what's that? Or, or yeah. books are the worst. You know, you yeah. see a bookshelf and I'm trying to go, what books do they read? Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, no, I, I completely agree. And I think that there needs to be some kind of paring down of, of what you've got there. Yeah. I mean, yes, people buy from people. We know that. And so you want to come across as a human being. And I'm not in some high tech massive studio here. You know, it's, um, it's yeah. actually one half of my kids playroom, but I don't have all of their toys on show behind me because I'm a professional yes. and I show that this is my professional workspace. Yeah. So Although it's difficult to find a space in your home, if you can just find that kind of couple of meters that you can just have yeah. blank backdrop behind you to begin with, then that's that's really important. And that's a really good starting point that you can then begin to build out your, your brand backdrop from there. Absolutely. That's. I mean, that's again, um, I'm just thinking, actually, I should have had those in here. I, uh, the slides that I did in the webinar that I did recently, um, I've actually illustrated that really well because um, one of my members, John, we actually did that whole exercise of going around his home. We started yeah. in his conservatory and um, we ended up in his garage with a real brick wall behind him. Um, right. But what I showed on that, that picture that I brought in is a bit like what you're saying, you know, that all around him was all the stuff from his garage that he's kind of shoved the other end of the room yeah. and he's literally cleared like a two meter space behind him. Um, you put a plant there and he's put a chalkboard behind him as well that he liked the look of and... Yeah. And I, I love it because and it's a great example because you're right. And I think so many people go, oh, I don't have a studio or when I've got a space, then I can do this. And, and what you just said there is spot on, you know, literally not even two meters. No. Um, yeah. And I think, I mean, you can get set up. I, I would be talking, I come in from more of a point of, and I've said this recently to members when I've been on support calls, you know, to, to set the camera away so you're getting as much width as you can without that side wall coming in or without the ceiling coming in. Um, but you could then mark that out, couldn't you? And I've done it actually with post-it notes and sort of yes. gone to the corners and yeah. gone, right, that's my space. That's all that's being seen. Yeah. So so what I recommend you do is I actually use masking tape for it. So I get my camera yeah. set up and it's better if you can get somebody to help you because you can then sit there in front of the camera while the other person does the masking. Yes. Help yeah. them how far to go and actually get them to mark out the rectangle that can be seen and yeah. also check that rectangle on different um, devices as well because sometimes I go live with my Logitech camera and sometimes I go live with my DSLR and yeah. they actually have different um, amounts that can be seen of my backdrop. Very good point. So, yeah, so you kind of need to make sure that you're marking the widest points that can be seen across all of your devices first. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing you need to do is sit in front of the camera and mark out where you are um, yes. within that screen as well, because yeah. you, know, you can't actually see what's behind Yeah, it's pointless the having, screen. yeah. And sometimes um, you can see, you know, maybe there's, it looks like a plant coming out. I've said that to people before, <laughs> that it's like, it looks like something's coming yeah. out or it was a nice painting on a wall that looked great yeah. on its own but sat behind them it looked like this thing was coming out the back of their head uh, yeah um, absolutely <laughs> or you've got somebody you know diving off a diving board into your head or something yeah. you just need to be aware of what's what's behind you for sure yeah yeah and I think so, actually it's a bit like, I was going to say, sorry, it's a bit like when I, when you do a Facebook banner or something to go on your page, yes. allowing a bit of a buffer space around it, because 
you know, what you're saying there about changing for different devices, or it might even be that if you're working with a camera on a tripod, you're in a slightly different position and it just allows a bit of room for error rather than literally going up to the edge of that yeah. um, marked point. I think in print you would do it you know, like a bleed edge or whatever they call it in yes. print, don't they? <laughs> yeah. And I think, um, um, you know, making sure that you've got that set up, then you can be really confident that what you're putting behind you is going to be right for all of the different circumstances under which you're going to be filming. Yes. And it's having stuff like that. It seems um, like a bit of an effort to set it up. But if you don't have it in place, and I, I actually recently moved offices because I didn't have this in place, yeah. and I just never went live because I couldn't get yeah. around faff to do it all of the time you know to set everything up to make sure my backdrop looked okay and yes. you, know, you just need to invest that time um invest um you know a bit of money if you need to to just get it looking professional and it doesn't have to be amazing and it doesn't have to cost a fortune but mm. it does have to look professional it does it makes a huge difference and, and again you know what i've said on a recent webinar it, typically in facebook or wherever it is you know we're watching an image before we hear any sound and that is your first impression isn't it, it is. partly the quality you know and when we're showing up and looking professional on video that's one element but actually people are taking that in and it's that split second decision or judgment of and like you say yours is yours is great for that you know it, an interior designer would spot straight, straight away those boards behind you and uh, just kind of lock in and oh who's this i want to have a listen to this Exactly. Um, and, and it just helps to reinforce your brand as well, you know, and it already sets up in your customer's mind um, kind of that you are the expert in your field. You are the authority. Yes. You know, This lady has mood boards in the background. Therefore, she must know about interior design, yeah. whether whether that person knows about interior design or not. That's the impression that it that it gives across. Yes. And so super, super done well, presumably. I, mean, I, I, <laughs> I don't know about mood boards particularly, but an interior designer would probably be going, she's done that really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Not the kind of randomly stuck around. Or, <laughs> um, so even that, again, is adding to your professionalism without you saying a word. Um, they're seeing all that going on behind. Um, yes. But it, so, so it obviously doesn't apply to everybody, does it? You know, me sitting there in front of your backdrop um, wouldn't look right. Yes. Um, <laughs> so one thing to think about then is how we tailor our backdrop to you know to your yes. own brand and the sorts of things that you need to include so one of the um, first things that I would recommend people to do is to actually get inspiration for what they want their backdrop to look like yeah. now I've personally done quite a bit of research on this and it's actually really difficult to find images of backdrops that look good um, yes. which probably suggests that there's a bit of a gap in the market there actually but um so what i suggest you do is head on over to pinterest and rather than yeah. looking for inspiration for the actual backdrop just look at inspiration for your field so whatever it is that you do just you know google or go onto pinterest and type into the search box what you do so you'd go in okay. for example and type professional um video yeah. and just see the sorts of images that come up. Think from your customer's point of view, what are they gonna to want to see that shows them that that's the field that you work in? So as I said, it might be that you want to have something like um, vintage photography behind you or some yeah. kind of equipment to show people that that's what you do. Mm -hmm. So in the same way in my backdrop, I have got examples of what I do so that it's clear for people to see. Um, and I was working with um, one of our other friends in the group um, who runs a ballet school recently, and I'm sure she won't mind me talking about it. Yeah. But we looked at the sorts of things that um, her clients, you know, would um, resonate with and what she could put on her backdrop that would automatically show what she does. And so she had a lovely print of her logo. She also had some pictures of um, a vintage picture of um, a family member um, dressed in all of the ball ballerina outfits oh, really? framed on the wall. And um, you know, you but you could go, you know, you could go beyond that. You could get some framed ballet shoes, all sorts of different yes. things. But you need to think, right, if somebody is seeing this screen for the first time, I want them to know immediately what it is that I do. And so you need to begin to think around, right, okay, so what are the things that I can include? So look on Pinterest, see what sorts of things are related to your brand. Um, you know, are there images of those things that you could include? Or can you put a shelf up and you can include objects that are about your business? Yeah. Um, and it's really thinking about that stuff that's going to give that first impression that someone's going to look at that and go, ah, 
I see that person's a photographer or mm. I see that person's a ballerina or I see that person's an interior designer. Yeah, brilliant. Yes. Does, absolutely. Um, and then I guess the, the second thing I'd say, um, sort of in line with that, is you want to make sure that your backdrop is in line with your branding as well. Because, you know, people are going to be seeing you on YouTube, they're going to be seeing you on Facebook. And you really want to make sure that your backdrop kind of reinforces um, the, the sort of um, face that you put out to the world. Yes. So if you've got particular brand colours, then make sure that you're bringing them in in your backdrop. And that's that's so easy to do. You just, you know, even if it's a vase or a book spine yeah. or a pot you know you can bring in those colors um i've got one woman that i'm working with at the moment her branding colors are blue and yellow and it's she's got a bookshelf behind her and it's just really simple to put in you know the plant pot the vase the book spine a box you know yeah. a green, whatever it is and just spread those colors out across the backdrop so yeah you excellent. Know, some your colors in one place you've got them spread out across the whole of the backdrop Similar to what you do on a website, really, wouldn't you? Or, you know, sometimes, and I know even from a photographer's perspective, you could sometimes change the colour of someone's top or whatever to make it all fit in. Or you'd see someone that's had a photo shoot done that's deliberately put colours on that are all in line and in keeping with the brand. Um, so, yeah, it all follows through, doesn't it? Yeah, indeed. And actually, the lady I was just talking about who I helped with her um, ballet backdrop, yeah. one of her photographs wasn't actually quite right. And she took it into um, one of the photograph shops and actually had it touched up. It was a, a physical photograph, not a digital one, because it was yeah. a, a old one, a vintage one. And um, they were able to put, I don't know, some kind of sepia filter on it or whatever yeah. it is do and so then it fitted her branding colors um so you know there are things that you can do if you've got something that you really want to use but it doesn't quite fit in you can yeah. sometimes doctor things to, to make them fit your backdrop yeah brilliant i think what i would just say with um you know thinking of putting props and things in for i've seen that you can get these sort of i mean this is wallpaper behind me <laughs> you can get these kind of things you can either start with a plain um colored backdrop um if anyone's interested in these kind of vinyl screens, what I've said to people is actually you can, you could, instead of having it on a pole that's sort of hanging there loose, you can actually pin these things to the wall or attach it to the wall and then you can put your props and things in front of it, can't you? If, yeah. if you wanted that fake brick panel or wooden paneling on the back, um, you can have that and then still, I mean, I'm thinking actually with this, um, I'll show you in a minute some ideas that I'd seen, but I'm, I'm thinking of, layering up over this rather than sort of starting with a plain colored wall um so you can bring those into it but i'm, I'm throwing that in because i can imagine somebody thinking well how do i do that if i've got a sheet hanging down yeah um, and I, yeah so. and i think absolutely you know freestanding shelf units are really great for you know um, yeah displaying objects on i mean what i have behind me i don't know if you can see i actually have some cupboards and um, the good thing about that is that the the cupboards enable me to stand things on them and then i've got these really thin shelves above them that enable me to just prop my um, boards up but again you know you could do something like having industry magazines on little shelves like that facing yes forward. you know all sorts of things that you can do once you've thought about what it is that um you know represents what you do yeah um, you know, whether that's pictures whether that's magazines or whether that's actually physical objects that you can display um you know on shelving or something like that yeah certificates is one that people quite often say to me about you know should i be displaying these does this kind of add credibility um one of the challenges you have is, is reflections in any glass don't you that's I mean, you've got no glass back there by the looks of it, have you? There are mat boards. And I know Adam yeah, I mentioned this in the group recently that one of the reasons he actually shot on an angle was because he suddenly realised we'd put all these pictures behind him and, and they all were reflecting the lights that he'd got. Yes. And I guess, um, I mean, I suppose you could remove the glass from them if you if you yes, particularly yes. wanted to. I don't know how that would come across on camera, but yeah. I guess that's an option. But yeah, you're right. You know, the reflections um, are not going to look good on camera. No. But certificate's um, a good idea if it's maybe a logo on it that's recognised or... To be honest, I'm, I would think it depends on your target audience and how valuable they would find it to see that you've got certificates there. Yeah. So I'm a qualified interior designer, but I don't show my certificates behind me because I don't know that anybody is that bothered about it. Um, no. 
they're interested in is whether I can help them to yeah. set up their businesses and whether I can help them to gain their own qualifications. So they're not really that interested. Excellent. Obviously, they want to know that I'm qualified. But, but I think people judge you not based on a certificate that you have on your wall, but the way that you present yourself, the advice that you give out. Yeah. And it's about building up that relationship. Excellent. Think, you know, and if you're doing something that requires um, a qualification like I don't know, let's say you're doing some kind of entrepreneurial thing with dentistry or plastic surgery or something, (laughs) then of course you've got to have certificates, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to show them on your backdrop. No. Have them available for people to see if they want to check out your credentials. You could put that on your website somewhere. But when you're talking about your backdrop, you're really talking about making it, you know, you're setting the scene. Um, And I don't know that, yeah, yeah. I'm a bit in two minds about it. I think I yeah, I totally agree with you. I'm not a fan, um, and I've discouraged people. Um, yeah, I was just interested to hear another, while we're talking. It just popped into my mind, and I thought, let me just yeah. see another opinion on that. Um, yeah, I think I think probably not. I'd stay away from them. I think um, the other thing I'd say as well about um, you know when you're setting the scene behind you is to not make it too cluttered either. Now my yeah. backdrop is actually quite busy, but to be honest, I usually go. Um, I usually use my DSLR, so I've got that fuzzy kind of bokeh going yeah. on, and it kind of fades it all out a little bit. Um, and I think you know, with your background, Adrian, as well, you've got that brick there that's got a lot of different colours going on in it. Yeah. And I think you are thinking of layering things in front of it. You just want to go careful not to make sure that it's not too much going on. You yes. know, if you start putting some props on there, you don't want it to be, you know, props and red brick and black brick and white grout. Yeah. And, you know, you just need to be careful that it's not too busy. Yes. Yeah. Great. I am. Um, well, let, let me throw this in. Let's have a look at this. Um, okay. I should just yeah. say, actually, we have, we've got people watching here. No one's commenting at all. I didn't really say at the start, but please, guys, chip in and tell us what you think to this. Um, if you've got any questions, if you've got any thoughts or opinions, um, please do jump in and let us know. And of course, if you're watching this in the replay as well, do let us know there as well. Um, be really interesting to hear from you. Uh, I've got here. So this was what I, you've already seen this, Kate. I posted this up when I was away. Um, this was a, 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 we were sitting in this little cafe. Um, I realise actually you haven't got your screen on, have you, Kate? You're... I've got my, I've got my um, Facebook. Uh, have you got Facebook? All right. <laughs> there's a bit of a delay, but it's... Uh, yeah, no have... problem. Well, let me, let me pop these. There's two of them really that, that came in. We were just sat in this and I, I'm looking thinking, ah, there's the brick wall. That's like mine, you know, just... I'm not saying I'm I'm trying to recreate this, but I like the way they put these colours together, that light blue colour and the white and the there's sort of black um, shelving and the wood. I just thought, actually, it all sat together very nicely there. Um, made me think, potentially, I like this blackboard kind of effect and look. Um, in fact, I actually bought some blackboard paint <laughs> about, about a year ago, thinking I might have a go at making one of these. It never yeah. got any further. um i i think i mean that is you know it's a nice kind of um it's a nice color scheme it's um it's got that kind of um new york loft feel to it um or kind of um it's almost a little bit industrial um in its design and i think you know that that kind of would fit in well with the sort of style that that you have yeah Um, Again, I would just caution against, you know, putting too much in there because if you look at the amount of space you've got behind you, you know, yeah. it's not a huge amount of room. And that works really well in that image because they've yes. got, you know, a whole wall of blue against a whole wall of brick. Yeah. And you need to be careful that it's not getting too busy. So you could bring some of that in with perhaps, yeah. you know. You put, I'm looking um, at that little shelf they've got behind the counter there with those two yeah. little wooden shelves on it. You could put a free or a freestanding shelf unit or like you say, a kind of industrial style wall shelf yeah. on there. And you could bring in that blue colour by putting some of those more bluey grey accessories on there. OK. But again, you'd want to make sure that those accessories were related to what you do. Yes. Rather um, than just kind of random things. And I think, you know, you want to go and have a really sort of good think about what sorts of things could you have behind you that says to everybody immediately, I teach pro video? Yeah. Because that's, you know, that's, as we said, that's how they're going to judge you, you know, yes. on the first impression. And I know I've, um, I mean, I mentioned in the academy, um, 
again about sort of relating and how would you uh, you know another thing is more how you dress as well um, but imagining you were meeting your ideal client you know where would you sort of meet is it more a boardroom type scene is it at home in a kitchen um, or, or is it you know and I like like you're saying this has always been my thinking really is this I love those like you say those sort of New York um, converted buildings with the big bricks yeah. and the big windows and the ironwork and that um, yeah. that was what attracted me to this kind of backdrop in the first place and I think actually you know a trendy coffee shop type yes. thing is, is actually a, a look that I like the idea of I mean I've got this this is a big wall back here and this is only half of it that's been seen and the brickwork goes along I am thinking, do I sort of move back a bit and, and create a bigger space behind me? Um, I've also yeah. thought about putting a little, we've got a sofa, um, you know, that sits in a playroom that's not being used really. And I thought, well, oh, no, I could bring that in and go for a completely yeah. different scene and a look where yeah. I'm sitting down. Yeah, um, for sure. And I think, you know, you, you obviously have, you know, the equipment, so you've got the advantage of being able to do that. And I think, you yeah. know, that, that would be really nice because you can bring in all of those elements that you like and you don't have to have it all in one shot all at once. You can, you know, at one point be in front of the brick wall, another moment be in front of yeah. the blue you know, but you want that consistent theme to, to flow without. So if you're having the blue wall, you want to bring some blue into where you are now so that there's yes. a kind of space. Okay. Which is space. another thing with, you know, some members have sort of said, I don't, you know, I don't want it all to look the same because I want them to look different when they're seeing different videos. Um, yeah. Do I mix it up and have different scenes? And I'm saying, well, actually, I know people have said, um, oh, that's the guy that's got the brick wall. <laughs> so actually, it becomes part of your yes. brand anyway, doesn't it? Without, yes. you know, so I'm hesitant to move away from it. Um, although I am looking at other walls here and thinking, hmm, <laughs> yeah, that's, for sure. that's just I'm, me getting bored. Yeah. And When you have that kind of strong brand, you can take elements of that with you, you know, so you yes. can create this kind of sort of industrial kind of look and you can configure that differently in a different place with different things, but it still gives yeah. that same vibe. You know, if I'm, if I'm filming anywhere else, I want it to be quite white with pops yeah. of blue and natural colours and people know who that is because even though it's not identical it's similar and that's what people identify you know when, yeah. when they see they see those things so as long as you stick to kind of the theme I think you'll be all right and you won't just be the brick wall man yeah <laughs> I actually when we're, when we're in there are lots of coffee shops and that with exposed brick um and actually even down to I was looking at these little um they got like electrical boxes with the metal <laughs> sort of cable going out at the top of them and things. It's all, everything's on the surface rather than hidden back behind it. And even things like that that I thought that would make it look quite authentic if I added something just subtly at the top that looked like it really was a brick wall. And <laughs> yeah, but that obviously kind of fits in with, you know, the sort of thing that you do. You know, you have a lot of kind of, you know, um, equipment that you can sort of bring in. You know, people are going to be expecting... Yes you know kind of you know perhaps a microphone hanging down or um you know yeah. a video camera or a tripod or you know there's all sorts of things so you think about really what would your audience expect to see what would a pro video expert have behind them and those are the things that you can you can bring in yeah or even a nice you know that you can get domestic lamps can't you that are made to look like studio yes. lights now on little tripods and it might well yeah. be that something like that stood back there yeah. on a low right yeah, that would look great behind you, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, because I do. Yeah, like I say, I, I, it's not till I start looking at other people's. Um, and actually, David's on here, um, who's just saying actually was thinking of putting a blackboard on the brick backdrop himself. Um, so thinking along the same lines as me, I think. Um, but it just as I'm talking to David and others, uh, it's making me go, yeah, actually, mine's a bit like you say. It's it's not plain <laughs> in the sense that there's a lot of colour in it. Yeah. But it is plain in that it's not telling you anything about me back there. Um, yeah. So, really yeah. That story. I mean, you could, you know, you can get these kind of, um, you can get vintage cameras, can't you, on, um, you know, lovely old stands and things. I've that got them be... sitting up here on a shelf, yeah. So, well, you, you, you need to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've probably got, yeah, different things around me. In fairness, I'd got one of the old sets that I had was one of these IKEA units with all the little square boxes in that everyone has. Um 
but I don't like that. And actually what it does, the other challenge you have when you start bringing shelves and things in is you're going to see shadows from your lights. Um, so it, yeah, again, lots of things to consider with it. And then we go into lighting that we haven't even talked, you know, I haven't brought you on here to ask about that, but actually lighting the room and things like that um, are all things that we go through in the academy um, that do add elements to this as to quite where you are and, you know, what sort of space you're in. But um, I think once you've found that space and you've got that blank canvas behind you, uh, uh, yeah, I'm loving this. Um, and I think as well, having, I mean, I'm, I'd be very keen, Kate, if you're up for it, that we, um, over in the group, we could kind of carry this thread on, really. I'm quite up for having a try at putting a few things in in the background here and just going, what do you think to this and taking a screenshot? Um, yeah, brilliant. And, and I'd certainly be very up for, you know, if, if anybody watching that's saying, actually, I'd like to get some opinions and thoughts back on this um you know by all means come over to the group find that thread and post a picture in there and either tag kate or myself um and let us come back to you a bit and give you some feedback because i think that's probably you know not everyone's got a designer's eye um the, you know the, yeah, that that's absolutely right but the other thing that i'd say as well and i I have, you know, worked with professional stylists before um, on magazine shoots. Yeah. And what I will say that perhaps people don't know is that you don't necessarily have to have an eye for design because what they do is they quite often place things, stand back, see what it looks like, move it around. And there's that you kind of um, need to play around with the backdrop yeah. as well. You're not going to even I didn't just put this backdrop together. I move things around. I, you know, yes. just I I rejected lots of things. I tried different shapes and, you know, different yeah. colors to see what it looked like. And you don't have to get it right first time. You just you experiment until, you know, and it will start to come together. And I think yeah. there's this um, there's this kind of fear of, you know, getting it wrong. And really, you know, whilst you're just setting it up, nobody's watching you and you no. can just have a play with it. It's a safe environment to do it. You know, you're in your home or your workspace. Just yeah. keep playing around with different shapes, different colours, and, you know, just begin to see what looks good. And that's, that's you know, what there is to it. You can also um, use the um, 3M command strips as well. You know, they're like Velcro, um, sticky yes. things. Yep. So instead of, you know, you don't have to put nails all over your walls or anything, you can actually just stick things up. And then if they don't look in the right position, you can just take them down again and, you know, no, no damage done. So that's that's good enough that it won't leave. It's not going to rip off the that's right. If paint or wall. Yeah. 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 OK, brilliant. That is a good idea. So, yeah, we need to all go to the stores and buy a whole load of things and bring them back and yeah. <laughs> post okay, them actually, up. Have a place. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> you well, can go I'm... to the shop, buy anything in your brand colours, bring it back, keep your receipt and try everything and then take yeah. back what you don't need. Yeah, for sure. I've been on photo shoots doing properties where actually they've kind of gone, just need to hide the label because this is all yeah. going back tomorrow. <laughs> that's right, that's right, they do. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it does get done. But um, that's excellent. No, I'm really enjoying that. Um, Good. So we're finding a place, we're getting, you know, one and a half, two metres of space behind you, just recapping a little bit here for anyone that's yep. coming in later, um, yep. marking out that space. Yes. Yep. Your inspiration yeah. from Pinterest or from Google. What are people looking? Well, what are people expecting to see when they come? You know, land yeah. on your page, um, and then going and getting all of the stuff and um, and yeah. building it on the the square or the rectangle that you've marked out behind you, and yeah. not being afraid to play either, and you know, move stuff about. Yeah. I mean, I, lo I love what you've done there. It is. I know you say there's a lot going on there, but it's very soft, and it all just. Um, I, I don't mean in terms of the, the, what the camera's doing on it, but the colours all obviously naturally sort of fit together there. It doesn't look, it doesn't feel overpowering. I'm not looking at it thinking, you know, there's a lot going on behind you. Um, it, it works really well. So uh, obviously that's, that's what you do and that's why I reached out to you and <laughs> was keen to make contact. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, it depends on what your brand is as well, because some people will have, I mean, my brand is very sort of calm, um, you know, my, my brand vibe is about kind of um, kindness and um, reliability and 
I, and it's quite feminine as well. Um, and I don't, and so, you know, kind of my backdrop is sort of reinforcing those things. You know, I've got little twinkly lights and yes. things like that because that kind of reinforces my approach to business. But there are other people who have like, you know, hot pink and black and they're very energetic and very vibrant. Yeah. So you kind of need to, to work that in as well, you know, to, to reflect your brand values as well as, you know, what you do. I was just thinking that as you were saying it actually with, um, you know, does that attract or repel a gender? <laughs> and, and sometimes that might be deliberate. And I know there's a lot of people, certainly in the entrepreneurial space, that speak to just ladies. Um, and I guess you could you could put something very different in that backdrop than if you were trying to attract guys. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> there's I all mean, that I, to think of as well. I mean, it just so happens that most of um, my customers, my clients are female um, yeah. and, you know, it, it's an industry that attracts women more so than it does men. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, my my branding and everything kind of speaks to that. So it is, it's about understanding, it's about looking at your backdrop from the perspective of your potential customers rather than from your own point of view, really. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. OK. Anything else you can think? Okay. Yeah, I think that's probably, so we've talked about um, marking out the background, we've talked about branding colours, yeah. we've talked about researching the stuff that people um, can put on there, we've talked about making sure there's nothing sticking out of your head, yeah. um, talked about not cluttering the space, um, we've talked about colours, about bringing out your brand personality, um, and, you know, importantly, about just playing around with stuff and, you yeah. know, using props and moving them around until it starts to look how you want it to. I know um, it's not necessarily your um, field, but clothing as well and the colours that you've got in what you're wearing, presumably. Yeah. You can yeah. put all that effort into that and sit there with a yeah. bright pink top on or something and, and totally take away from what you've put into the back. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I do my um, videos, hardly ever do I wear anything other than blue, white, um, yeah. grey. And um, it is it is the same thing because I am part of my backdrop, you know, it, it yes, is, that's right. is part of the brand. Um, I don't always stick to it. I've occasionally be seen in a red top, but, you know, I'm human. <laughs> but, yeah. And I bet you even get down to nail varnish and all the rest of it, don't you? <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's good, it's good to consider that because it just gives that impression of, you know, consistent branding. Yeah. Excellent. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Yes, yeah, me too. Um, now, Kate, you're not quite often folk are kind of plugging a product or something here this isn't a fit for you is it in that sense you're not on here because you're trying to sell everyone to come on and join your course um no that's right well unless anybody wants to become an interior designer they're that's, welcome yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um even more thanks for coming on and talking to us about this um but i know uh, kate has said she will hang around in the group and if people have got any questions um, and really, if you did want to go on, I think, um, you know, Kate's offered really that she would do some one to one calls with people if you wanted to have her personally help you and do some branding there, um, even though it's not really her lane and what she's doing. So, um, yeah, we do appreciate that, Kate. And, yeah, uh, I, we'll see how it goes. I mean, as I said, you know, it's not um, it's not kind of my main area and I focus yeah. on you know, my students and that. But if there are some people that would like to have a one to one session, you know, I'm sure we can arrange. something. Yeah. I think if someone's going, oh, Kate, I need you to help me, you know, really, it's been taking me months to sort this out. Or... <laughs> yeah. But excellent. No, really appreciate that. I appreciate your time. Um, no I know you've got to rush off and get the kids soon, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. And um, guys, as I've said, if you're listening in or catching this in the replay, uh, please do post any comments below and uh, you'll see Kate's already tagged at the top of here. Uh, so by all means, tag her or stick a picture in, show us your backdrop, show us some questions and thoughts that you've got. And as I said, over in the Pro Video Made Easy group, I'm going to have a go at playing around with this now, uh, move a few things around. And over the next few days, just post some different ideas up and see what we think. Um, need to go and get myself a bookshelf first. <laughs> and maybe, maybe get Rachel to stand there and hold it for me while I... <laughs> or maybe we green screen it in. <laughs> no, that's excellent. Thanks ever so much. Um, okay, bye-bye. Appreciate your time. All right. Thanks all. See you soon.